So I've decided to make a series of videos about rhetorical devices in writing. You may have seen the first video which explores the use of rhetorical questions. Now the term rhetoric may put people off bringing up images of stuffy politicians trying to drive home a point, but rhetoric is so much more than this and used really widely in writing. Walling it right down, it's used to persuade. And as writers, where every word we use in our writing needs to count and matter, then persuasion is in fact a really, really useful tool. So, rhetoric makes our writing more persuasive, beautiful and poetic. But how does that work? It works because it's compelling. It works because it appeals to our sensibilities, switching us on. It works because it makes our writing more memorable, unforgettable even. And it works because it takes a simple, the simple language and elevates it. And those last four lines that I've just said are an example of the rhetorical device anaphora, which is what this video is all going to be all about. Anaphora is where the word or words repeat at the beginning of successive lines or clauses to emphasise what you're saying. Like Caesar's, I came, I saw, I conquered. As a result of this repetition, anaphora creates rhythm, which is especially useful for uh, lyricists but it's certainly not limited to song alone. Churchill used it in his greatest and most important speech. Most of us won't remember anything of this speech other than how he used we shall at the beginning of successive lines, culminating in we shall never surrender. In doing this, he created emphasis and a call to action around his central rallying cry to inspire the nation in their darkest hour. We're programmed to understand that what's being said when this repetition occurs is vitally important so we'd better listen. It's another example of rhetoric being the tool you can use to get you what you want. The use of anaphora also makes a piece more pleasurable or to listen to or to read, which is definitely something that we want to achieve as writers. Charles Dickens famously used anaphora in the opening lines of his book, A Tale of Two Cities. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness. Here Dickens is reveling in rhetoric, using anaphora and antithesis too, which is the juxtaposition of opposing words or ideas presented in parallel, uh, parallel structure. So that's like the best of times and the worst of times, wisdom and foolishness. Maybe that's a rhetorical device we'll look at in another video. So anaphora gets rhythm, emphasis and power into your writing, making it unforgettable. It's therefore not surprising that Dickens uses it for his first lines of his book. It's a hook to turn the reader on. So I said before that rhetoric appeals to our sensibilities and it does so by appealing to either our sense of logic, which is called logos, our sense of emotion, which is called pathos, our sense of ethics, which is called ethos, or our sense of time, which is called kairos. With lyrics, we often use pathos, the appeal to the sense of emotion. Okay, so let's look at some examples from some popular lyrics. The police's 1983 hit, Every Breath You Take, uses anaphora in the verses. So let's look at verse one, for example. Every breath you take, every move you make, every bond you break, every step you take, I'll be watching you. So this is falling into the pathos category because it's appealing to our sense of emotion. The first lines sound like it's setting up a, something lovely, a romantic sort of song, but soon we realize that something is off here. The chorus rubber stamps our suspicions. Oh, can't you see you belong to me? How my poor heart aches with every step you take. Hmm, you belong to me. So not romantic then, more controlling and creepy. And suddenly the end line of the verse, I'll be watching you, begins to sound more like that of a title of a thriller novel. The persuasion brought about by the use of anaphora being used here is quite threatening, which is perhaps kind of unusual for a song, especially a song which with massive irony has played at numerous weddings over the years. This is a stalky, you're being surveilled type song. And the use of anaphora here really drives home the fact that this is a bitter person who's desperate to convince the other person he'll be watching them all the time. If it had said, wherever you go, I'll be watching you, it would have been threatening and more than a little creepy, but he's done, he's gone so much further, he's made a list. If you were on the receiving end of this, you'd close your curtains and sleep with one eye open. And you'd certainly avoid watching anything uh, on the TV like Basic Instinct or Fatal Attraction. So we get from this a feeling of bitterness and obsession. All in all, Anaphora has worked brilliantly here and was a well-judged device to employ for this song as it created urgency and made this shows that the singer really, really means business. Now to something less threatening but certainly evocative and emotional. The bridge to Ed Sheeran's song, 
castle on the hill. One friend left to sell clothes, one works down by the coast. One has two kids but lives alone, one's brother overdosed. One's already on his second wife, one's just barely getting by. But these people raise me and I can't wait to go home. Here Sheeran lists six of his friends and gives a summarising biography of each and almost overwhelmingly his mates aren't doing very well, certainly not as well as he is anyway. His final line ties it all up neatly with the sentiment that no matter what's going on in their lives, he considers them family and he can't wait to get home to see them. Pathos in action again, the appeal to our emotions. And this is really important. Lyricists often use a line after the anaphora to break the rhetorical pattern and to tie everything up. This line then sticks out because the pattern's been broken. Our ears immediately sense the change. It's like the theatre lights suddenly swing from a beautiful solo, which we've been transfixed on, to pick out someone or something that we had no idea was there on the stage. And as a result, all eyes are on this thing, this line in this case, Sting singing, I'll be watching you. Sheeran singing, but these are the people that uh, raise me and I can't wait to go home. There's a sense of resolution in both of these songs. Back to Castle on the Hill. So Anaphora's made the bridge really powerful and memorable. The verse and chorus of this song are memorable and catchy. So to use a rhetorical device for the bridge uh, and pull back on the guitar and add some air around the sentiment of, his, uh, of this section makes it really work. If he's driving at 90 in the chorus, then here in the bridge, he slowed down to 40, cracked open a window and put on some country music. As soon as the persuasive pattern of anaphora emerges, which is in the second line, our brain is geared to tune in, like it's like when someone bashes a fork against the glass to silence the crowd before the speech. This bridge does the same, silence it asks for, because what comes next is important, and that's what anaphora does. Another example then, and one to make you feel good. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me, and I'm feeling good. So that's great use of anaphora. It's memorable, iconic now, and brilliant. Or how about unforgettable? That's what you are. Unforgettable, though near or far. Nat King Cole uses anaphora only once in the song, and it's these two opening lines, just like Dickens' opening lines of A Tale of Two Cities. He started with beautifully crafted language to hook them in, right at the beginning. It's incredibly romantic and has gone on to live up to the song's title, It Is Unforgettable. Kelly Clarkson uses anaphora in Because of You to appeal to our emotions and make us understand just how much her father leaving when she was little uh, had affected her. Because of you, I never stray too far from the sidewalk. Because of you, I learn to stay, play on the safe side so I don't get hurt. Because of you, I find it hard to trust not only me, but everyone around me. Because of you, I'm afraid. Eminem uses it loads in his song, If I Had, to highlight his frustration with life and the world. I particularly like this section, and I'm not a rapper. Tired of stepping in clubs wearing the same pair of lugs. Tired of people saying they're tired of hearing me rap about drugs. Tired of other rappers who ain't bringing half the skill as me, saying they wasn't feeling me when nobody's as ill as me. So in this section, there's anaphora and the classic rap device of internal rhyme. Now I know Eminem's not saying that other rappers aren't half as skilled as him because they don't use anaphora or internal rhyme, because they probably do, but the point is he knows his devices and he uses them well. And if it's good enough for Eminem, it's good enough for Kendrick Lamar too, who uses anaphora plenty of times in his Grammy and Pulitzer Prize winning album, Damn. The list goes on and on and on. So if you want your lyrics to hook in the listener, appealing to their senses with proven literary tactics, then considering using rhetoric, and in this case anaphora, is well worth it. Now I hope this video has been useful for you. If it has, please subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when I release new videos. And see you all soon.